Hi everybody. Maybe you're wondering why I'm in the garage again. And I've got my Chillicothe backdrop here. Uh, I don't know if this is a genius idea or not, but I have nothing to lose. Um, you saw how the backdrop doesn't match. However, I have a bunch of sky left over that I cut off. It's just about perfect height. So, because I don't need to have up the top, you're not going to see it anyhow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to trim the hills off of the Chilcothe backdrop, pitch the sky, glue this down, and then glue the hills down over top of it. So the sky will match. The hills won't match, but and you really don't see the hills that much, uh, especially on that first part. Uh, so I think it'll be a really good solution. I have nothing to lose. This is free. I either need to trash that uh, anyway to get another one of these, which will be you know forty or fifty dollars. So I've just got a little bit of time invested in it, and I'm going to see how it's going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exacto knife. And I'm going to try to trim all around these hills and peel them off very carefully and then glue that stuff down. Also, while I'm at it, this is the end that uh, matches up with the current backdrop. The hills here are behind ITT Grinnell. You can't even see them. ITT Grinnell goes there. So I'm going to leave this floppy a little bit after this end so I can sort of overlap it with the other one. But the other end, I don't think you can see in the video right now. I'm going to extend this backdrop. I'm broke. I've got some little pieces of masonite uh, that I had before. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to splice it onto that end so the backdrop extends about a foot past wherever against the wall. So if you're ever taking a picture of wherever, like I'm, you know, I'm filming switching or anything, you won't just see the backdrop in and then the wall. It'd be less obvious. So I'm going to try it. Again, I have nothing to lose. So I'll keep you uh, informed along the way. Okay, it's in place. <laughs> uh, I always like to confess my mistakes. So I intentionally left it overlapped here a little bit. So I'll probably put some double-sided tape there to, to seal that off. But my problem is if I do that and I ever try to take my back drop down uh, it's probably gonna rip it because it's just paper um, tore up a little bit of stuff trying to slide the backdrop back in there but nothing that can't be repaired um, right here the blue tape tried to um, grab it a little bit and uh, so let me explain my biggest mistake that I uh, realized after I'd done it so over here, these were designed to go left to right. So that's one, two, three, and four. They all match up. So what I should have done when I did the sky, because remember I cut the sky off, I should have started down here and went one, two, three, four. Actually, I only need two and a half. I didn't do that. I just picked out one that I thought looked like it matched up fairly well here because I was going to have trouble matching this anyhow uh, but so that's not bad but then I come down here this doesn't match that well and I get down there it doesn't match perfect so if I would have started here you know if I would have put four here it still wouldn't have matched probably there very well but three and four would have matched perfect here and two and three would have matched perfect there. So, trying to learn from my mistakes. Um, I'm going to touch up the edges. I've got some, my wife has colored pencils. She's an artist I talked about. So, I can uh, fix that a little bit. Uh, I'll, you know, be able to glue this a little bit more. And like I said, think about double-sided tape here. I intentionally overlapped it. Uh, I'm just afraid if I do that, it'll really tear it up if I ever take that down. 
So the good news, another bit of good news happened today. I don't usually do mail calls, but these came today. They're, uh, it's uh, 10 meters long, so it's about 33 feet of LED lights. Wife got them on Amazon. I don't know, they're really cheap. Uh, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. I got two of them. Uh, I'll show you the model number in case you want to try to get them. Um, but uh, that's the same thing I used up here. So I'm going to redo the lights on Chillicothe to match. And then I've got another set to go here. I'm off work tomorrow. So my intention tomorrow is to get this up, have all the lights on and button it all together get this piece of fascia connecting the two of them and it'll look like one uh, continuous layout and yeah <laughs> i wouldn't have planned it this way i'll be honest with you uh it's been a challenge connecting the two of them uh, if i was going to build if i'd known i had this much space at the beginning to build the layout i would not have done it the way i did it <laughs> you know i'd have done it more linear and uh instead of uh fighting the all the different dimensions of the shelf brackets and everything else. Uh, the wiring, I'd have done the wiring different. So, anyhow, uh, it's looking good. Uh, again, I just used my extra sky, cut out the Woodland Scenics or the Walters Scenic Horizons, glued it on there with the, the Gorilla Glue, and it looks pretty good. And I can see wherever, if I take some pictures now, I'll probably color that blue down there at the bottom. Um, you know, put, a, put something there to make it that doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll do something to hide that brown down there. But, you know, if I'm down this level, you won't see it. So, so questions, comments are welcome. This is what's left of the snow pile. If I ever take a picture today, it's not that warm. It's only about 40, 42, but with this much sun, it may be gone after today. So, uh, went away a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Uh, one other thing real quick. This is what drips of Gorilla spray adhesive do to foam. So, you really don't want to let it come in contact with the uh, foam. It's not going to matter here that much. It'll be covered up, but it really eats it away. Hopefully none of you are insane enough to try to do what I've been doing. But to mount the piece across here, excuse me, I kicked my stool out of the way. I'm going to have to put a cleat on the bottom of this. I'm just using a half inch plywood. Um, I'm attaching these so it's going to rest on top of these. In order to not have those split, I pre-drilled the holes for them so I could screw them in. I'll put another one down there and maybe another one over here. And then I'll put a cleat on this and that should be enough if I've got a cleat here to suspend it. I don't think the half inch plywood will sag very much. Um, but again, this isn't a, it's an unusual situation. Uh, but just to let you know how I'm doing it anyhow. I don't really like to use these drywall screws But I've got a ton of them because I used to use drywall screws to build bench work I, I use deck screws now because I like those the heads those star heads instead of the Phillips heads But I'm just gonna go ahead and use up the drywall screws. That I've got because otherwise they'll just sit on my workbench for basically until I die <laughs> so so we'll go ahead and put the rest of these up and I'll be able to cut the piece out and see what I, uh, how neat I, how big I need to make it. Okay, here's another mistake. This switch was behind the backdrop between these two one by fours that I mounted to put this. And I even said in the video, I don't need it. I'm just gonna leave it on and turn it on and off with the power strip. I couldn't get it out. Uh, stuck. So when I decided to replace these lights, I needed to get that out. So I could pull it up through the top 
but I couldn't pull this up through the top and I couldn't pull this down through the bottom. Ended up having to cut the wire. But before I cut the wire, I was messing with this and this doesn't look as good as it did <laughs> uh, before I did it. So hopefully, you know, once I get this section up here, the upper part, I can do some more doctrine to that, but it looks worse than it did because I was messing with this. So what I did for now was I, I routed the wires for the new lights down here. I had them come out this end and go to a different plug. So don't have that problem now. And for the new wires for this section, I'll have them go down behind there. But uh, again, poor planning on my part. I should not have just put that, allowed that switch to be back there. I just thought I wouldn't have to take it out, didn't worry about it, and I was wrong. So, learn from my mistakes. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to shoot this little video. These TV antennas are great detail. Right at the front of the layout, they snag everything. When you reach over to uncouple or do any work, I've bent these things a bunch of times and you know, sort of almost ripped them off because they're pretty tiny. They'll snag your clothes, cut your arm. So I would suggest if you're going to have these, don't put them right on the front of the layout. Might be a better background detail. So I've been meaning to talk about this for a while, but <laughs> this uh, backdrop installation has reinforced it. Okay, I've got the cleats up. Um, so now the easiest way to do this is just to set my piece of plywood up there and mark it. That'll get it pretty close. Again, no one's going to really see this uh, that much, so I'm not going to worry about a perfectly snug fit and keep cutting and recutting and all that. Uh, I'll make sure I've got a little bit of play, so I put it in place to be there. So after I do this, I'm going to paint it white on the bottom. Uh, put the lights on it and stick it in place. I'll show you what that looks like It's uh, roughly cut in place uh, Now I just need to get this angle I need to cut From here and angle it down to the other one so I can put the fascia on it. I'm a little I'm not concerned. It's gonna hold it, but there's a lot of weight on this shelf bracket here um, I know it'll hold it it's strong enough. It's, not gonna worry about it, but I just I'm not wild about it, and I don't want to put like a pillar here, so it's just gonna have to be okay. I will put a cleat here once I get uh, it in place, and hopefully that'll take a little bit of pressure off of it. Right now, there's nothing holding it uh, that whole distance, so um, I'm gonna go figure out the angle and cut it, and I probably won't put another picture of it up until I've painted it and put the lights on. Except for cleanup, I'm saying this is done. I tell my wife sometimes when I'm tired, been working all day, I said I'm I'm done, D U N done. And that's that's the way I am today. <laughs> um, so it's Friday evening. I'll sort of pan around. Um, and then I'll step out in front of the camera and sort of point out some little flaws here and there. Uh, let's see. It looks real bright in that corner because, uh, you know, the, we've got a lot reflecting off that green foam. And I don't think it'll be that nearly that bright. Uh, but if it is, I can uh, adjust the lights down. I can easily do that. And so you can come around here. And I went a few inches past the, the door. There will be, that's the Oak Hill, that's the Brickyard. Uh, so let me walk over here first and talk about it. Okay, so you can see how I had to go up here. Uh, so it's 10 inches, the, face, the distance here. They both used to be 13. This is 10, this is 11. Remember I talked about the difference in the brackets. These brackets are really thick. If I bring this down another inch, they would really be uh, intrude. And so I decided I'd just live with the difference. Um, you can't even see the brackets over here. I know you can't see them on the film, but you can probably see those. 
Uh, so I don't like that, but uh, it is what it is. That's why I had to go up here an inch. Um, uh, it's not going to be that bad. I mean, I can live with it. Uh, a couple other things. Again, I've tried to touch up with colored pencils and stuff as well as I can on the um, seams. They're not perfect, but it's a backdrop, and uh, you know I can live with it. Let me come back over here. I went about a foot past from wherever, something like that. Um, it wrinkled a little bit. I've got some more sky, so I can always peel that off if I want to and put another piece up there. Wasn't real happy the way that piece came out. I don't know why. It doesn't match that well and it's a little wrinkly, but again, I'm not too worried about it at this point. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Um, tell you about what my plans are. I haven't run train in a while. Tomorrow I'm going to run a train on Chillicothe. Just going to do some switching. I'll post a little video about that. Uh, Sunday I'm, I have to go to Indiana for a week. So I'll take some things with me. I'll try to take the Chillicothe yard office, work on that because I haven't touched it lately. I'll try to take the bridge uh, and build that kit while I'm there. And maybe I'll do something on the on Oak Hill on the brickyard too. The weather is supposed to be pretty nice next week in Indiana. Uh, it gets dark early there. They're in central time and they're right on the edge of central time. So it gets dark pretty early. What I intend to do, uh, do a little bit of rail fanning. Uh, but I'm going to go Sunday. I'm going to go a little bit earlier and I'm going to look for bricks um, at this spot in Evansville. Then I'm going to follow this abandoned line uh, back, sort of goes northwest out of Evansville to Mount Carmel, Illinois. And it's an old uh, New York Central line, and then it became part of Conrail, and Conrail didn't want it. And so technically, Norfolk Southern owns it, but there hasn't been a train on it in probably 40 years <laughs> or something. The, the track is all still there, except for farmers have ripped it out, <laughs> so which is really unusual. There's a couple neat things. It doesn't go through any towns because it wasn't built till later, but I'll get into that uh, uh, when I talk about the video. So I plan on shooting that uh, Sunday, and then maybe I'll do some rail fanning and some other stuff from the hotel. I won't be back here till Friday night. It's our wedding anniversary Thursday, so we're going to do something on, uh, on Friday night. So I'll be back to working on this um, next weekend. So um, hopefully I'll have the bridge done and I can dig into the dig into the foam. Hope you've enjoyed the adventure. I'm considering the construction completely done now. The, it's closed. Now I'm just considering this to be scenery work. So, yeah, it hasn't been. <laughs> it's been a challenge. Again, I, if I was knew I had this much space at the beginning, I would not have built the layout this way. Again, I'd have had all the same brackets. You know, I wouldn't have had to worry about that. I'd bought everything at one time. Everything would have been the same. So, uh, uh, you know, that, that presented some challenges. But uh, hopefully I'll get the uh, track connected here pretty soon. And here in two or three weeks, hopefully you'll be seeing me run a train from Chalkothe to Oak Hill. So until then, everybody stay safe. Um, I know a lot of states are lifting their mandates, but, you know, I haven't had my shot yet. And uh, so I'm still wearing a mask at Toyota. We're actually doing testing once a week. It's mandatory at the plant in Georgetown. I've been tested the last two weeks. And uh, so I'm, I'm negative, but you know, I'm looking forward to getting the shots. I'm looking forward to <laughs> getting this haul behind us. So, so just stay safe. Uh, no matter which state you live in, just do what you can to stay safe and keep others safe. So. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good weekend. And I said, I'll post an operations video tomorrow. Stay safe.